Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here, along with... Bill from Tested and Punished Props Academy. And if you watch Punished Props Academy, you may have recently seen a video where Bill took a Fallout Pip-Boy and modified it. Yes, in fact I had to wait. Because I you got yours last time I was here. Yeah, and I put mine together. Yeah. This is still as issued, right. but Bill here shooting some other projects for our show mm -hmm. Model Behavior also brought along your modified right. Pip-Boy, and I would love to take a closer look at this and tell me how you built this. All right, let's 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 get into it. Um, I wanted it to look a little more um, like it was in the world. Yes. And I and the, the kit is amazing. It's a really, really wonderful kit, but it's all injection molded plastic. Um, I don't know that any of the parts were actually painted. There's some graphics and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but that plasticky look, I didn't want that. The color is built into the yeah. plastic. I wanted something with a little bit more oomph. So uh, while the kit was still apart, I repainted everything. Uh, just an airbrush with some model paints to give it a little bit more of a kind of a, well, let's, can we compare the colors? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I, at first glance, they look very, very similar. similar yeah. your, your color matching was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what I did though with my green olive-ish paint was I put a little bit of metallic paint yes. on it. So it's got a little of a speckled metallic shine in there. I didn't because in the fiction of the world, this is machine parts. I would imagine, parts. yeah, there was, it was metal. Um, the uh, the color on the, the bezel here is a little different. I went with a gun metal on that. Mm -hmm. um, I also weathered it a little bit. I didn't want to go too overboard on the weathering, uh, but I went in with some of those uh, oil paints and yep. dirtied it up just a little bit. Uh, but the big thing I did was I added some mods. So on this particular kit, because it comes disassembled, this part and this part are fairly hollow. There's a lot of room to put stuff in there. Um, this part right here, there's actually a bit of room in there for maybe like an Arduino or batteries. Um, and then behind the screen, there's a little bit of room too. I think very little space. A lot of yeah, people yeah. kind of underestimate how cramped it is behind the screen. They assume yeah. you can just throw an LCD in there. Not as easy as that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible, and I'm looking forward to seeing other people give that yeah. a shot. You could put like a touch LCD in there oh. with a Raspberry Pi and have a full computer here. Yeah, and some wiring may be required. A little bit of wiring required, and I did that uh, on this fella. So the mods I did, the the um, uh, there were three specific mods I did. One for the screen, one for these light tubes, and one for the speaker. Mm. The screen... I bought a, an electroluminescent panel about yay big, uh, originally for my Fallout 4 Pip-Boy. I never did that, um, so, but I had it lying around, so I thought, let's try and stick it in here, and it fit almost perfectly. Oh, nice. Almost perfectly. One-to-one -one scale. Uh, I put some green acetate over it, so it's got a little bit of a green uh, hue to it, and then I printed the graphic on transparency film, just right in my um, uh, laser printer, and I stuck that over it. So I sandwiched all those things together, and I put them behind it. The black, uh, uh, what, what would that be? The, the screen, like they want you to put a graphic on there that came with it. Yeah, kind of a decal. I cut that out with a Dremel. Yeah. Just cut it out so you can pass the, the screen right through it, and this is what we get. And you actually, with this, cool. it emulates that CRT look. Yeah really nicely, like from different angles of, I, oh, and uh, when it lights up, that's so nice. Yeah, it's really There's more cool. depth there too, behind that plastic. Yeah. Now the the, um, the transparency film shines wherever the black um, toner is not. Mm -hmm. um, you could, ha I could have printed it backwards and then flipped it over and then it would all have that shine, but I actually kind of like that the black is more of a matte and you yeah. just get a shine on the green parts. Now, the, uh, there are two tubes in here that are meant to look like lights, <laughs> but they're just bits of plastic. Yep. So on mine, I put some LEDs in there. And they are actually those the tea lights you can get. I got some cheap tea they lights. Flicker. The LEDs, I just ripped the LEDs off of that light, threw that away. Just the LED has, I imagine, like a transistor in it or something to make it flicker. Hook it up to, in this case, three volts of power, and they flicker and light up like that. Oh, that looks so really cool. sweet. Um, and then, the last mod I did, this little fella right here. Now, for those of you who have not put one of these together, this is supposed to be the radio. Mm -hmm. And it was actually one of my favorite parts of assembling this kit because there's a dial here in which you wire a rubber band yeah. and actually get the dial to move up and down and you're, it, with mechanical action. Yeah. So I wanted to make a real speaker here. I found a really tiny Bluetooth speaker on Amazon. Nice. Ripped it apart and mashed it all in there. Um, there were <laughs> there were some challenges. Uh, charging it 
I can't, uh, I would have to unscrew this and plug it in. So I plugged the charging cable into that permanently mm. and drilled a hole in the back and the USB cable is actually hiding in there. Oh, nice. So to charge okay. it, I just stuff uh, an extension cable in there and, and plug it in and charge or it. Or you can just put actually a tiny USB battery, one of those phone yeah. batteries, oh, yeah, shove it sure. in there and that would charge that as well. Yeah. Um, it's also difficult to see, actually. I can open this and it would be easier. Inside of there is also where I stowed my batteries that run the lights. Yeah, two so double A's, triple A's? A couple triple A batteries in mm -hmm. there, yeah. So that's how that works. And I just cut a hole in it and the cuff's gonna cover it, no big deal. Very nice. Um, speaking of the cuff, actually, I also, instead of using the, the provided clips to hold the cuff in, yes. I drilled and tapped those holes so that I could screw them in and then I can unscrew them and replace it if I wanted to make maybe make a leather cuff. This is, I think, yeah. an essential upgrade, even if you're not gonna do any aesthetic changes, just for wearability and displayability. The way this faux leather cuff attaches is with these bracketed mm -hmm. plastic clips. And when I was installing it, uh, they actually snapped off a few of them. They're like a, a series of them. Yeah. And tapping it and using real hardware, I think is gonna get you more durability. Mm -hmm. You can tighten it and you can loosen it and yeah. it, that's a smarter move. Um, I used M4 screws. Uh, anything smaller than that might strip the plastic. Mm. So just a, a warning if you try that yourself. Um, I know that because of my did. Blade Runner blaster, yeah. I use mostly M3s and I found that with soft plastic, an M4 yeah. is much more durable. So mm. I went with that. Um, but yeah, there are, there are obviously lots more mods we could do. Uh, like I said, the leather cuff would be really nice if I got some, you know, uh, maybe, maybe a future project there with some good leather on it. Um, I know some people are gonna wanna put a, a real screen in there. I'm happy with this one. I don't think I'm gonna modify the screen anymore, but uh, there's so much more you can do. The, the tape thing opens, the tape comes out. There's room to like put more stuff in there. I, I can't even think of it, but I know the modding community will be out there in yeah. force doing really bonkers stuff with this. It, it's such a nice kit. I'm so glad that it was released as a kit and actually I've recently seen it on sale. So it's already been Yeah, it's discounted. cheaper now, for sure. Yeah, so totally worthwhile as a pickup purchase. And if you're gonna be doing mods, if you're painting, uh, follow Bill's recommendation in terms of painting before you do assembly. Yeah, so much easier. once you put everything together, uh, the, the two bolts that go all the way across really hold it together. When they're out, the thing kind of falls apart because it's like three pieces here mm -hmm. and one main piece. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I added a button to turn the Bluetooth speaker on because it's got its own power. So you hold it for three seconds. There it goes. It should be connected to my phone. <laughs> it's possible that the wiring in there is a little weird because uh, it's a very small board and I had to solder stuff to it. But uh, let's see if it wants to play. But there's a tiny Bluetooth speaker that you found just online? Yeah, I found just on Amazon. It was like 14 bucks. Nice, nice. We'll put a link to that in the description below so you can purchase this as well. And you just have it playing like a tested video yeah. off your phone. Or a, a Punish Props Academy video. Or a video. Punish Props video. Very nice. Of me working on this Pip Boy. It's not an amazing speaker, yeah. but it was $14 and it fit in there and it makes noise. That's awesome. Yeah. Well done. Boop. Shut up, Bill. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Bill, for bringing your Pip-Boy, your modified Pip-Boy. It's really cool to see the comparison. And I think the subtle aesthetic changes you did really go a long way. You didn't yeah. try to overdo it. I think initially I was like, let's just throw tons of oil and rust on this. But you don't necessarily always have to do that. Oh, no, you gotta mix it up a little bit. My Pip-Boy, my Fallout 4 Pip-Boy, I've rusted that one. This one I wanted it to be a little more. Like maybe, maybe the vault dweller who owned this took better care of it. Well, you can find more projects like this on Bill and uh, Brittany's YouTube channel, Punish Props Academy, and on some of the projects that Bill does with me on Tested. You can find those at tested.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.